We are in the Gartner Data Analytics uh, event in Orlando. Um, we've attended a few sessions, it's been a great day so far. Let me start by asking you, like, what are some of the common challenges or things that you heard from the data leaders that you, you interacted with today? I think um, there's, there's, there seems to be three resounding themes that are coming out of this, and uh, data governance is one of them, data quality is another, and without any big surprise, AI is going to be part of that. Obviously, I guess the discussions we're having about there's such a synergy between those three categories in a way, in that um, there's almost a flywheel approach that you can't do one without the other. These are the kind of discussions that we're having also at our booth, which is fantastic. We've got um, customers coming in that are telling us about great things they're already doing with these categories, but I'm looking forward to, you know, maybe the after the, the, uh, the whole Gartner conference has ended, the kind of ideas that people are going to come up with of what they can do with these three categories. One of the things that catch my attention, I think many data leaders attending today, was that quote that said, you know, 20% or 30% actually of AI project would fail due to mm. data quality. Mm. We've known this for a while. Mm. We've been talking about it with customers for a while, but it's amazing to see that it's still an standing issue that customers are still fighting. What do you think about that? I saw another quote from another session today by Sally Parker, where she was saying, she had a session on how to be a good CDO or CDAO. One of the, the kind of um, statistics she brought up was uh, even more damning. Uh, it was that uh, lack of data quality five years in a row was one of the highest things on wow. the CDO's agenda. And of course, every year, the, uh, the kind of categories have slightly changed here and there, but quality has always kind of stayed as is something we just can't crack. And uh, obviously, we have all these grand ambitions and aspirations to do these amazing things with AI. We all know the technology is pretty amazing. Um, but we are, I think, all aware and cognizant that the data quality is going to hold those ambitions back if we don't crack them. Here at Cluedin, we kind of believe we kind of know what that void and chasm is. And it's been the inability to bring in the business into the actual supply chain of data. I think data quality has always been one of these pieces that have, you know, that's something for IT and engineering, right? And um, really what the, the chasm that people have to jump is, I need to provide my business with the ability to manage the data they produce as it gets proliferated throughout the business. And I think you're going to see a big jump in data quality and hopefully a lessening of this failure rates um, as well, um, if companies start to embrace the idea more and more that it's the business at the end of the day that is, is responsible for the data quality that they'll drive into AI and BI and all these other initiatives as well. In the keynote session, it was all about AI ready data. Yes. It's like we can talk about all the possibilities and they're amazing, but if we're not building that foundation, we're not going to achieve anything. I know we have a session coming up tomorrow or Wednesday actually. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? So on the, I guess, the same vein, uh, it's of no surprise that a lot of the companies we talk to are wondering how they could build their own company GPT, sure. right? It seems pretty obvious and, you know, our great relationship with Microsoft, they've helped provide some of the pillars in the Clued-In to make sure it's really easy for people to build their own co-pilots off their own data. Now, at the same time, this seems pretty um, exciting but scary and could be chaotic um, when you start to think about the privacy and security. <clears throat> when you think to, about the life cycle of data going in, you start to worry about, okay, well, will this thing be a demo at best? Will it actually run in production? Will it survive the tenuous nature of you know, a large amount of people getting their hands on uh, what could be quite sensitive and complex data? And so this session is really about breaking down the complexities of that, using a customer case where we had a pretty ambitious and forward-thinking customer based out of Sweden that was you know, pretty much from day one knocking on the door. How can we use AI in our data management practices? And back to the point you know, from the previous question you had, <clears throat> if I was to slightly ruin this, the, the <laughs> session, really I guess the end goal is that we need AI to help us with data quality and we need data quality to help us with AI. And there's this beautiful yin and yang kind of synergy that happens to make sure we can uh, have those things actually running and producing value as we all intend them to do. I know you've answered this a little bit partially throughout you know, the previous questions and answers you gave, but 
what do you think we can share with the audience listening to this interview about the value of Crudin in this wonderful world of AI and data and what where does Crudin fit in within this and how does it add value? So I would uh, cheekily say that you know I think that uh, IT and engineering they play a critical role in the data supply chain. I would also at the same time say they've got enough tools. There's enough tools and choices and I think really the, the void that exists and this is really where Cludin is helping fill this gap is you know it's really about finally bringing the business in. This is something um, you know that I, I really bought into with MDM originally. If you look at the classic Wikipedia definition of MDM it was really about how do we bridge IT and business and the idea was you know formed 30 years ago and it was really solid. But I think a lot of companies have been struggling. The, the technology is not always easy to wield and therefore often it gets handed back to IT and engineering and I wouldn't blame them for saying I've got my own tools. I've got my own tools and this is not necessarily a tool that helps me in my part and um, you know I think that the, the sneak peek for the session is the importance of these domain experts that actually understand the data. Not are experts in data, they understand that particular data, whether it's customers or vendors or suppliers, that they could look at a record and say, I wouldn't expect anyone else to know this, but that's wrong. Or I wouldn't expect IT and engineering to capture this, but guess what? Those are actually the same people and we should merge their data together. And I personally look forward to more customers and companies have included in their hands and finally being able to bring the business in. I have actually one final question, if I might be cheeky as well myself. We have people that came to see us today and they were like, you guys did a quality, you are MDM, what's going on? Then we have a session tomorrow with one of the analysts talking about whether MDM has died or not. Yeah. Can we clarify for our listeners, like, what is, like, where, what's this MDM space is heading? Because we often talk about Traditional MDM, modern MDM, quality. Can you give us a bit of clarity on that? Um, how much time do you have? Um, so I think included, we see there's such a synergy between MDM and data quality in that we don't see that there's a real separation. One of the things that was interesting about the uh, augmented data quality solutions quadrant, which obviously we're very humbled and excited to be part of, is that um, uh, if you looked at the critical capabilities and put them side by side with MDM, there's almost a 90% overlap. So I think this is something also the Gartner have identified that there's a ton of overlap here. To your point, including we believe there is a traditional way of doing MDM and there's a modern way of doing it. And the modern approach is agile. It is adapting to change without complexity. It is you know utilizing things like AI, graph, technology advancements, actually let them work for you, right? And um, you know, I think there's been enough scar tissue built up in the MDM industry for people to understand what made it complex. And uh, we at Cludin like to think we've cracked these challenges. So can't wait for people to see this session. Can't we wait people for, to come and talk to us about how we can solve their data quality challenges. Thank you. Thank you.